Hey everyone, it's Crystal here in the AFE Trading Center. Today I have a wonderful patient in the chair who is going to be getting a neurotoxin treatment. So she actually has had dysport in the past. Um, this is her second time now getting a neurotoxin treatment. So we're trying out a different product. We're gonna be using Xeomin today. And we're only focusing on two areas that really bother her. So if you come on in, I'll kind of show you those areas a little closer. So we will be treating her frontalis muscle, which is across the forehead, responsible for these horizontal lines, and the glabella, so these 11s right here. So she actually just stated to me that she noticed that her 11s have actually gotten better even just from one treatment of neurotoxin in the past. Um, which I explained to her makes complete sense because when we treat these muscles with neurotoxin, it's paralyzing that muscle. So it's basically stopping the contraction of that muscle for the three months that it's sitting in there. Meaning if the muscle is not moving, it's going to atrophy and get smaller. So p patients will see a progressive um, improvement in the wrinkles on their face if they continue getting neurotoxin treatment. So we are gonna go ahead and start with today's treatment. I'm gonna mark her up first. Actually, I should probably clean you first, huh? So I just like to use alcohol. She's not wearing any makeup, so I'm just using alcohol to make sure she's good and clean before I mark her up. So you can see when I came up with what I was going to give her, um, there's a lot of things that kind of go into it. So first of all, the strength of the muscle itself. So go ahead and raise your eyebrows for me. You can see she's pretty strong in her frontalis muscle and then make your angry face pretty strong here as well. So that kind of helps me in determining what dose I'm going to give her. Also, you can see at rest, we see very fine static wrinkles, which also kind of lets me know I should kind of go a little higher on her dose, but I want to be cautious because this is the first time I'm treating her. I can always give her more, but I can't take it out once I give it. So I tend to be pretty conservative when I'm first treating someone. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark up her face so I know exactly what I want to do, kind of treatment plan her. So raise your eyebrows one more time for me. I'm going to mark my lateral border. So I'm just looking and seeing where that movement falls off. So I'm treating from one border to the next. You can relax. Actually, one more time raise for me. You can also see her bifurcation right here. So she's got movement up here. You can see there's none right here. So this is a perfect example of a bifurcation. Everyone's frontalis bifurcates and it kind of breaks off into two bellies. But where that bifurcation is, is different on every patient. Hers is a little bit lower. Some patients, it doesn't happen until all the way up into their hairline. So if you see movement up here, treat it. If not, you don't have to. There's no muscle there. So on her, I don't have to treat there. But I do want to treat up here because I do see movement there. So I'm just going to kind of start dotting up her forehead so I know exactly where I want to go. Let's see. Raise one more time. Relax. I probably am going to put one in the middle there just to make sure that she's evenly treated. And then go ahead and make your angry face for me. So marking the tails of her corrugator so you can see where this muscle's pulling in. I don't wanna treat outside of there because now I'm in the frontalis and that's a greater chance of dropping her eyebrow. So I'm gonna stay within those markings. You can relax. One into the center of the procerus and then a medial and lateral injection in each corrugator. So let's see what I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I just wanna make sure I have enough volume in my syringe so that I can push one unit in each dot so that she's evenly distributed. It doesn't mean that I'm giving her 12 units of neurotoxin. It just means I'm giving her 12 units of volume so that she's evenly treated. All right. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. We are using the Comfortox 0.5 syringes, which are amazing for injecting. I'm just pushing one unit of volume in each dot. You can also see I'm just going right next to my dot. It's important that you obviously don't go through the dot. One for 
risk of tattooing the patient, which would be pretty rare with a dry erase marker, but mostly for sterility reasons. We want to make sure we're staying as clean as possible. So not going through the marker, staying at least a third above the brow to make sure I'm not going to drop her eyebrow or her eyelid or cause any kind of heaviness. And treating from lateral border to lateral border so she doesn't get any of that weird spocking. Now we're just going to go to the glavella. Always picking up and isolating these muscles so that the neurotoxin stays exactly where I want it to stay. Sealing off the orbital rim so that it's not leaking down to her lid. And then I'm giving her lid ptosis. So just taking all of these important safe techniques that we teach at the AFE to make sure the patients get the best outcome. Okay, so after that, that's it for the treatment. How'd you do? Good. Not bad, right? Yeah. Quick and easy. So what we're gonna do is just clean her off, always wiping up and away from the eyes. Same on the frontalis, always wiping up. You don't wanna move that neurotoxin down towards the brow and potentially give her any kind of brow ptosis or heaviness, so always wiping away. The little reddened areas that you may see on her, they're not too bad. Some patients you'll see pretty big like welts almost, those typically go away within 20 to 30 minutes. And then my post-op instructions for her are to not touch her face for four hours and to not raise her body temperature for four hours. So anything that's going to make her sweat, exercise, hot tub, sauna, even walking in the sun, anything like that. And that is it. It'll be about two to 10 days for this to start working and kicking in. Should be at max effect at two weeks. And then we will kind of monitor her and see if at that two-week mark she needs a little enhancement. Um, and then from there, I'll probably be seeing her around every 12 weeks or three months for repeated treatments. So thanks for watching, everyone.